Hey guys, welcome back to Wrestle News 365. Hope everyone is doing very, very well. As always, there's a ton of WWE news to get into today, so let's get straight into the stories. Let's start with a first, a very interesting story about potential plans for WrestleMania 37. A very interesting match, and a match kind of out of left field for WrestleMania, considering Edge. Now, Edge, as we've all been hearing about for months and months, of course, Edge is on the injury shelf at the moment, but we've heard all of these reports and rumors going back to the summer that when the Rated R Superstar does return to WWE after his injury, he's scheduled to resume his feud with Randy Orton. He's even speculated at one point that this final match in the trilogy of matches with the Viper was going to include the WWE Championship, but potentially plans could be changing. Now, as I mentioned, back in July, WWE had formulated plans of a third match between the then WWE Champion, or WWE Champion as a week ago, Randy Orton, and the Rated R Superstar Edge. Now, Initially, this third match was scheduled for SummerSlam, but these uh, plans were delayed due to the injury suffered by Edge, a triceps tear, during the greatest wrestling match ever at Backlash back in the spring. But last month, it was reported that plans had not changed as WWE now wanted Edge and Orton to meet at WrestleMania 37 with the WWE Championship on the line. But the reputable uh, Twitter news account WrestleVotes has reported that Edge Orton is still the long term plan, but there has been discussions for a new match. That match being Edge versus The Fiend, Bray Wyatt, for the show. Now, the two have crossed paths very few times over the years. Actually, Bray Wyatt did actually appear on the WWE Network show, The Edge and Christian Show, several years back. That was when Bray Wyatt was still the Eater of Worlds. Uh, we also had a slight interaction in 2016 uh, when Edge uh, came back to host an edition of The Cutting Edge on SmackDown Live at the time. This was before Survivor Series, so pretty much exactly four years ago. And we had Bray Wyatt and Edge inside the same ring then but apart from that we've had very few interactions from the rated r superstar and the former universal champion so wrestlemania 37 it's currently scheduled for march 28 2021 there have obviously been internal discussions and rumors about it possibly being moved to april 11th or april 18th possibly due to getting in a vaccine closer in the time to deal with the current pandemic and actually have live fans in the stadium it also been rumored that WrestleMania 37 wouldn't even take place in SoFi Stadium in California. It would actually be moved to Raymond James Stadium in Tampa Bay, Florida, the original location for WrestleMania 36 before the pandemic had that move to the WWE Performance Center. So there is a lot of moving parts, as you can tell with this story. But as far as I'm aware, and from what I'm reading, the plan is still to have Edge versus Orton at WrestleMania for now, but but there's a little bit more news about this potential Edge versus The Fiend matchup at WrestleMania. It might not be a singles match, we could be getting a mixed tag team match. Now, hear me out for a second because this is being reported, I mentioned by WrestleVotes as well, who are very, very reputable. And what I will mention here before I get onto this mixed tag match is Edge versus Orton was always the plan. And it's been planned for a long, long time. As I mentioned, all the way back to the spring, all the way back to the greatest wrestling match ever at Backlash. Back then, that's always been the plan. But the moment or the day that WrestleVotes tweeted that Edge versus The Fiend could be a possibility for WrestleMania, suddenly that very day, that very day, Randy Orton lost the WWE Championship to Drew McIntyre. Now, why is that significant? Well... The reason for Drew McIntyre winning the WWE Championship in the first place was to facilitate this final match in the Edge vs. Autumn match at WrestleMania for the WWE Championship. Now, obviously, between now and WrestleMania, of course, Randy Orton could win the WWE Championship back again. There's no doubt about that. But it's certainly interesting that the day that the Fiend vs. Edge uh, rumor comes out, that very day Randy Orton do drops the WWE Championship, it says to me that plans, maybe they haven't completely changed yet, but they're certainly changing. So that's something to keep an eye out, uh, on. But as I mentioned, possibly this Edge versus The Fiend match might not just be a singles match. It could be a mixed tag team match. Now, how would that work? Well, having become an on-screen act 
in recent weeks, we could see The Fiend, Bray Wyatt and Alexa Bliss teaming up at WrestleMania next year. Now, as I mentioned with WrestleVotes, they've suggested that internal WWE discussions have suggested having Bray Wyatt and Alexa Bliss team up uh, at the 2021 edition of the Showcase of the Immortals. Now, this comes off the heels, as I mentioned, of WrestleVotes' initial report saying that Bray Wyatt and Edge was a match that was being talked about for WrestleMania 37, but the latest iteration of this idea suggests that an option could be The Fiend and Alexa Bliss teaming up against Edge and his real-life wife, a team of WWE Hall of Famers, the Glamazon Beth Phoenix, in a mixed tag team match. Now, as I mentioned, Edge and Beth Phoenix are, of course, a real-life man and wife. They've both got children. They're both WWE Hall of Famers. And they're both back in the WWE fold at this point. Of course, Edge is a performer once again after his miraculous return earlier this year at the Royal Rumble. Obviously, he's injured, but he's cleared to compete in the ring again. Beth Phoenix is very, very involved in WWE nowadays. She's a color commentator for NXT every Wednesday. And we've seen her return to the ring on several occasions over the last few years, whether it's at Royal Rumbles, WrestleManias, uh, Evolution a couple of years ago. So she can very still much go in the ring. I thought she was actually one of the better performers earlier this year at the Royal Rumble. If you go back to that Royal Rumble match in January, and it feels like a million years ago because there was a crowd there and things seemed normal at that point. But if you go back and watch that, there was a few standout performers in that match. Uh, one was Bianca Belair. Go back and watch that match. She was really a star of that one. But another one for me was Beth Phoenix. This was the Royal Rumble where she got the cut on the back of her head, really bloody on the back of her head, and still just absolutely killed it, putting that phenomenal performance during that match. So obviously she can still go. And I don't... I, do you know what? I, I'm interested in that. I am really interested in that. Now... As I mentioned, previous reports stated that it was going to be Randy Orton versus Edge for the WWE Championship. That can still happen. Anything can still happen between now and WrestleMania. Randy Orton could win the WWE Championship back on the Monday after Survivor Series for all we know. For all we know. Maybe, maybe Drew McIntyre only won the WWE Championship because they wanted to do McIntyre versus Reigns at Survivor Series. They wanted to have a, a, a baby face in a heel match. Maybe that's all they wanted. And maybe Randy Orton will win it back before WrestleMania. Maybe we'll get Randy Orton versus Edge for the WWE Championship after all. Maybe that is the case. But if we do go in a different direction for WrestleMania, I, I still do think, regardless of whether it happens at WrestleMania or not, we're getting Edge and Randy Orton 3. That, that we are getting that match. Given the amount of time that they've put into that feud and given the people involved, this is Randy Orton and Edge. They're very senior guys on the WWE roster. If they request to do a match or they request to do something, they're going to do it eventually. So we're going to get Edge versus Randy Orton 3. They're not going to let Vince McMahon just drop that feud and it never happen again and they never get the blow-off match. That is going to happen. It's just a case of, of when or where that happens. I think it might happen at the Royal Rumble. If it doesn't happen at WrestleMania, it will happen at the Royal Rumble. So potentially we could get the payoff of Edge versus Orton at the Royal Rumble. And if that is the case, then that means we possibly could get The Fiend and Alexa Bliss versus Edge and Beth Phoenix at WrestleMania. And you know what? I'm really not against it. I'm really not against it. I think that's a really interesting prospect because the reason I say that is because for me, The Fiend and Alexa Bliss or Bray Wyatt and Alexa Bliss on Raw the last few weeks, they've been the best thing on the show. They absolutely have been the best thing on the show. And I think they should be rewarded for that, especially the likes of Alexa Bliss. She shouldn't just be in a managerial capacity. Everyone knows she can work and she's a, a good wrestler. She can work in the ring. So I think she should be rewarded for that. And then on the other side of things, we've never seen Edge and Beth Phoenix team up before. We know, obviously, that they're married in real life. Uh, they're pretty interwoven at this point on WWE TV as well. When it came to the Edge and Randy Orton feud earlier this year, Beth took an RKO from Randy Orton. And she came out pleading with him uh, and told that... She told Edge to step away and retire again and all that kind of stuff. So in storyline, they've worked that out as well. So I think I, I like that. I do like that. And I like the idea of if if Edge defeats Randy Orton at, at, Roy, at the Royal Rumble and The Fiend attacks him. And then obviously, how can Edge fight back against The Fiend and Alexa Bliss? Well, he has to get his wife involved and his wife backs him up for WrestleMania. And these are four people that can all go. These are four people that can all work in the ring, very experienced. It would be a unique match. And I think it would just be something we haven't seen before. Not only, obviously, Edge versus The Fiend would be great anyway. We haven't seen that feud before. 
obviously unique character in The Fiend and Edge is just in incredible on the mic and can still go in the ring, obviously, despite his limitations. So that feud would be great. But I, th I think adding in Beth Phoenix and Alexa Bliss just gives it a completely different dynamic. And I think that makes it more real because you've got the real life husband and wife element of that. And I think they would like it as well, Beth Phoenix and Edge. Imagine teaming up with your wife and, and husband at, at WrestleMania on the biggest stage of them all, on the biggest platform that the industry has to offer. I think that would be really interesting. So I'm not against it. And uh, look, we might not get it. It might just be rumors again at this point, but it's certainly interesting nevertheless. So what is also interesting is possibly we have an NXT superstar soon to debut on the main roster, that being former NXT Women's Champion Rhea Ripley. Now, this news is according to Dave Meltzer on the recent Wrestling Observer Radio, but it reports that former NXT Women's Champion Rhea Ripley is most likely done with the black and gold brand and is moving to the main roster soon. Now, Meltzer said that he had heard talk, this is a quote from Dave Meltzer, that he had, quote, heard talk of Ripley moving to the main roster, end quote, and Ripley losing clean to Io Shirai this week on NXT was another sign of the young Australian superstar moving from NXT to Raw or SmackDown. Now, after the match on NXT this week, which was the main event for the NXT Women's Championship, Rhea Ripley and Io Shirai embraced for a hug, and it seemed to indicate that they were, quote, finishing up their story, according to Meltzer. As reported previously, uh, Rhea Ripley and Shirai were both listed on NXT's injury report following their match this week on NXT. Rhea Ripley suffered multiple contusions and abrasions to both ears because of her earrings got pulled out by Io Shirai during the match. And Io Shirai is currently dealing with a sore neck. Uh, Rhea Ripley also earlier this year faced Charlotte Flair at WrestleMania 36 for the NXT Women's Championship. Lost the title. Has already been introduced to the main roster audience. And I think a lot of people thought post-WrestleMania she was going to be called up to the main roster. And it never happened, I think, for a variety of reasons. One being uh, the, the pandemic. Because there was issues at the time about... Could she even be in the United States? There was issues with the visa. I don't think she went back to Australia at the time, but there was rumours she did have to go back to Australia. Basically, she had all this momentum heading into WrestleMania that kind of got stopped because of Charlotte Flair. And that is just the case. I don't think Charlotte Flair was the right person to win that match, but Charlotte Flair needed something to do at WrestleMania. She needed to have her WrestleMania match and she needed to win at WrestleMania because that's what Charlotte Flair does. So that momentum that Rhea Ripley had did kind of slow down then and then due to the pandemic she was off tv for weeks anyway so any momentum she had just died and i don't think it was the worst thing in the world looking at that that she wasn't called up then we've seen what happened with the likes of bianca belair bianca belair was called up at wrestlemania itself and for about three or four months maybe even longer than that six months she did nothing she did nothing now she's on SmackDown now and she's starting to do stuff again finally and starting to be recognized and actually be given something substantive but back then for months she did nothing and that's not to say that Rhea Ripley wouldn't have done the same but you know there was a crazy time and no one knew what was going going on no one knew which way was right or left so I don't think it was the worst thing that she wasn't called up I think now's a better time uh, that the woman's roster on Raw and SmackDown desperately need it I've mentioned this time and time again you've got Becky Lynch, Ronda Rousey, Charlotte Flair out on Raw. You've only got a couple of, you. I would say, Bailey and Sasha Banks are the biggest stars on SmackDown. Bianca Belair is getting there. They need more bodies. They need more bodies and they need more talent there. So uh, I don't think it's a bad thing. Where do I think she'll go? I'd love to see her go to Raw and have a feud of Asuka. Whether or not that can happen, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. But it's exciting. Obviously, there is a, a spot on the Survivor Series team uh, for Sunday. So maybe Rhea Ripley could debut there. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, maybe we'll even find out tonight on SmackDown. Who knows? Speaking of returns and debuts, it's been reported that the Bella Twins, WWE Hall of Famers, are they WWE Hall of Famers? I don't actually know if they're officially inducted or not. Who knows? But they're reportedly in talks for a WWE return. Now, it's been over two years since Nikki Bella competed in a WWE ring. She took part in her final match at WWE Evolution, where she lost to then Raw Women's Champion Ronda Rousey. A few months later, Nikki announced that there had been a cyst found on her brain, which effectively ended her in-ring career, or at least we thought, because once again, once a wrestler is retired, they're never really retired, which might be a running theme as The Undertaker says his final farewell this weekend. But since stepping away from the ring, Nikki has got married and given birth to her first child, a son named Matteo, in July of this year. Nikki's husband and Matteo's father, Russian dancer, Artem 
<laughs> I always struggle with this last name. Let's just go with Artem. He talked about the possibility of Matteo seeing his uh, mother in the ring one day in an interview with US Magazine or Us Magazine. Uh, they noted that Nikki has been having talks with WWE about a return to the ring. Uh, Artem said, quote, she's been having talks about coming back and doing something together with Brie. They both have kids and I feel like they still have this unclosed chapter with wrestling. I would not be surprised. Now, obviously, this was actually mentioned. They did an appearance uh, a couple of a couple of weeks ago or a week or so ago uh, on some program in the United States, both Nikki and Brie, and they said that pretty much the same thing. They have this unclosed chapter when it comes to pro wrestling and they have the WWE Women's Tag Team Championships. And the last time they competed in WWE, the Women's Tag Team Championships weren't a thing. So maybe they wanted to come back, win those tag team titles, considering they're the original Women's Tag Team, and come back and uh, win that before they retire for good. So who knows? Who knows? Of course, both Nikki and Brie were announced to be WWE Hall of Famers to be inducted on WrestleMania 36 weekend. But the pandemic, of course, put those plans on hold and WWE announced that the entire entirety of the 2020 class would be inducted in 2021 during WrestleMania 37 weekend. So when it comes to them coming back, look, I mentioned about the, the women's division needing bodies. I don't think the Bella Twins were ever the best workers in the ring. Uh, they're certainly big name stars, though, aren't they? They're certainly names that can help draw a rating, can certainly, they've got a huge following. I mean, a massive following on social media and uh, in television. I think Total Bellas still does very well and everything they seem to be on does very, very well. And it's obviously in WWE's best interest to try and get them back in the fold if they can. Obviously, there would be a bit of concern about Nikki. She mentioned she had a cyst on her brain. That's why she had to retire. Is she going to be cleared? I guess that's a WWE thing to, to figure out. I would... I wouldn't be against having them return to the ring. I wouldn't. Obviously, there was some concern about when they returned last time in that 2018 run that there was a couple of injuries. Do we have to mention the Liv Morgan kick to the face from, from Brie Bella? So I would be concerned about, you know, are they going to come back at their best? Are they going to come back safely? That's something to consider, certainly something to consider. But in terms of having them back, it, you know, of course it would be great to have them back. I mean, anything that can get more people watching the show, anything that can draw eyeballs to the product and they are names as i mentioned are they are they amazing workers no there are far better workers in wwe right now than the bella twins ever were and are they part of the women's evolution i'm sure i will anger so many people when i say this but i don't think so <laughs> i don't think so um i think if you go back and look at some of the bella twins matches you know try and find a good one there there aren't a million of them i thought the ronda rousey match at evolution was good but, you know, historically, when they were in their peak, were they having amazing matches? No. Is that, are they part of the time that they were in? Absolutely. This is a time where WWE superstars were divas and they still weren't treated properly and all that kind of stuff. That is absolutely true. Regardless of that, as characters and as personalities, they're incredibly popular. They have a huge following online and around the world. So WWE be foolish not to try and get them back in and do a storyline or try and get them back on TV, even if it's for a couple of weeks they certainly draw more eyeballs to the product and draw more eyeballs on social media, having the Bella Twins involved. So, um, I like Artem said, I would not be surprised if we see one more Bella Twins run, especially with the WWE Women's Tag Team Championships. It wouldn't be hard for them to win, to be honest, considering the WWE Women's Tag Team division is non-existent. I mean, I'm probably the Bella Twins. I was about, you know what I was about to say. The Bella Twins are the only team that hasn't split up, but they have. <laughs> they have. They have done that on WWE TV before. Do we even need to, to mention that Bella Twins angle with the whole? Oh, I wish you wouldn't. I'd eat, well, I wish I'd killed you in the womb or something like that. You know, just uh, no. And was it Brie Bella being Nikki's slave for thirty days? I mean, do we need to mention those storylines? So. Yeah, that's just how great the tag team division is in WWE. You can be biological twins and they will still try and split you up at some point. That's how little WWE cares about tag team wrestling, unfortunately. But in terms of having them back, you know, as I mentioned, of course it would be great to have them back. And WWE would absolutely want them back in the fold, even if it's for a few weeks, a WrestleMania match, whatever, to challenge for the Women's Tag Team Championship. So don't rule it out. Don't rule it out. Uh, we mentioned about NXT earlier and Rhea Ripley. 
But we could have a former NXT champion returning to television very, very soon because Karrion Cross is expected to make his return to NXT very soon. Now, Cross has been out of action since suffering a separated shoulder during his NXT championship win over Keith Lee at NXT TakeOver 30 back in August. Now, he relinquished the championship only days later, three days later, on August 26, and has been off TV ever since that night. Now, while WWE never actually announced a time frame for Karrion Cross to return to TV, the usual recovery time for a separated shoulder is anywhere from two, from two weeks to three months, pretty broad. So Cross and Scarlett have been posting uh, several cryptic tweets recently and Instagram posts showing off the recovery process of Karrion Cross. And he noted earlier this month he was, quote, absurdly stronger than he was before the injury. Furthermore, it's been noted in the latest edition of Wrestling Observer Radio by Dave Meltzer that Cross is, quote, on his way back to the ring. <laughs> like breaking news, right? As if that's breaking news. Of course he's on his way back. No, he's on his way from the ring. Like, you know, what, how is that news? But there's no word yet on what WWE has planned for carrying Cross. But he was rumored at one point to go right back into the NXT Championship chase once he's medically returned to action. The irony being that there was so, there's so much irony when it comes to this NXT Championship picture. First of all, of course, Karrion Cross wins the championship, separated shoulder, has to relinquish his championship pretty much the very next uh, night, well, a couple of days later for NXT TV. And then who capitalizes on that? Finn Balor. Finn Balor famously, first ever Universal Champion, hurts his shoulder, and then the next night has to relinquish it. Obviously, there are parallels there. It was kind of, well, fate's kind of giving back what it took away from you when it comes to Finn Balor. That was the interesting thing about that whole situation. But, <laughs> but, uh, then on his first championship defense, Finn Balor, at uh, NXT TakeOver 31 against Kyle O'Reilly, gets a broken jaw, and he hasn't wrestled since. He's away from TV for several weeks. They were doing these updates. Of course, Finn Balor actually returned to TV this week, but he didn't look, like, he wasn't cleared at all, because in that brawl that happened between the Undisputed Era and the Kings of NXT, he did not get involved. He's still got this giant lump on the side of his face from, obviously, his swelling from his broken jaw has not gone down. I think they're hoping, they being Triple H and the NXT officials, they're hoping that Finn Balor is going to be clear to compete when it comes to uh, NXT TakeOver War Games, which is in December. Whether or not that's actually going to happen, I don't know. Because it looks to me like this broken jaw injury for Finn Balor is not going the way that the NXT officials would like. I think the only reason they haven't stripped Finn Balor of the NXT Championship at this point is because they did it with Karrion Cross. You don't want to have two champions back-to-back have to vacate the NXT Championship for injury. So I think they're giving Finn Balor the benefit of the doubt, but there's only so long you can do it. It reminds me of Daniel Bryan when he won the WWE World Heavyweight Championship in 2014. Of course, he won it at WrestleMania, defended it against Kane at uh, Extreme Rules. Uh, but then after that was when he started to have the neck trouble. And then it was kind of, well, I'm going to have surgery and maybe I don't have to give it up. I'm, I'll be back for SummerSlam. And he just didn't get better and he didn't get better and he didn't get better. And eventually they had to take the title off him. And it was an awkward situation. And it kind of feels like it's the same situation now when it comes to Finn Balor and the NXT Championship. How long do you wait? You know you've got NXT TakeOver War Games coming up in December. Do you wait that long? Because, I mean, what's the date now? It's the 20th. That, that event's, what, two weeks away, three weeks away, something like that? It's really not that far away at all. Is he going to be ready in time? If Wednesday was anything to go by, he certainly didn't look like it. He still had that giant lump on his face. Not like Jillian Hall, but a legitimately broken jaw. He had surgery only a few weeks ago. Those things you can't rehab as well. Broken jaw, it's not like, I don't know, tearing a tricep or anything like that. You don't get the surgery and then try and build it up. The broken jaw is there... You use it every day, so you have to be sure not to speak, or you have to be careful about how you eat and chew and all this kind of stuff. So it's it's one of those things where you just have to let it recover. And the problem is when you just have to let things recover, they can recover in a month, or they can take three or four months. You don't know. So I think eventually the NXT officials are going to have to make a decision here. Maybe it's a case if Finn Balor can't, can't compete for a while, Maybe he drops the championship straight back to Karrion Cross. Maybe Karrion Cross just comes back, picks it up, says, well, I never lost it, so I'll pick it back up. And then maybe eventually you can do the whole Karrion Cross and Finn Balor. There is actually two real champions. Or maybe a third person, you can do a three-way version of that. I don't know. 
That NXT Championship, though, just looks incredibly cursed at this point. I mean, to have two champions back-to-back -back get injured and pretty much have to relinquish it, again, we don't know if Finn Balor, but it's just, it's crazy, it's crazy. But nevertheless, NXT needs Karrion and Cross back soon. They really do. I think, I look at that NXT roster, and I'm not going to say it's bare or anything like that, but we've certainly had iterations of NXT that have been stronger than the current roster that we have now. That's There's no doubt in my mind about that. So... Getting Karrion Cross back in will be very beneficial for them. Is it going to make them beat AEW in the ratings? No. <laughs> no. If you saw the AEW ratings versus NXT this week, AEW absolutely blew them out of the water. I mean, in terms of total viewership and the demo. Not that that's a surprise. It happens every week. But at this point, is it even a Wednesday Night War anymore? I don't know. I really don't know. Even when NXT wins, they kind of don't win because they don't win the demo. It's a conversation for another time, and I've spoken about it a million times, but... Regardless, the original point being about Karrion Cross, it will be great to have him back in NXT. And finally, I want to talk about The Undertaker. Of course, this whole week has been about The Undertaker. I actually watched The Undertaker yesterday on Hot One, so first we feast. I might put a link in the description box below because it was a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to watch. I really like that the, their content on YouTube anyway. So I would be sure to check that out. It's a lot of fun. And you see The Undertaker in another light like you have with all of these interviews. It's fascinating to watch. But what is interesting is that The Undertaker, yes, WWE's The Undertaker, a WWE superstar under contract, is joining Cameo for a limited time. Yes, The Undertaker has joined Cameo for a limited time only. WWE and Cameo announced today that the dead man is available for 30 limited edition personalized video messages, which he will record on Sunday while at the WWE Survivor Series pay-per-view. Of course, Taker will be at the pay-per-view for his final farewell segment and 30th anniversary celebration. Now, you're going to need a pretty penny to buy one of these cameos from The Undertaker as the video requests are going for $1,000 each. Yes, $1,000. And I saw this and... It kind of, I rolled my eyes at it slightly. It's not The Undertaker's fault, of course. It's, it's not his fault. But at the same time, you just fired Selena Vega. You just fired Selena Vega, and you've got Vince McMahon going to war with his, with his own talent and independent contractors about working with third-party platforms and working with Twitch and working with Cameo because they were making too much money working for Twitch or Cameo, working on Twitch and Cameo, more money than their WWE contract, and they kick them all off so you can't work with Cameo, you can't work with Twitch, because we want that money. And then days later, The Undertaker is on Cameo. So it's hypocrisy at another level, isn't it? Now, The Undertaker obviously is getting money from this, but I would assume, given WWE's uh, new stance on third-party uh, platforms, that WWE are getting the bulk of this money, or at least half. Uh, a, a, a grand for... Uh, an introduction from The Undertaker really is not for me. <laughs> I mean, I don't know who has that kind of money. Nevertheless, I'm sure The Undertaker and WWE will make a pretty penny of it, more being WWE. But I just thought, you know, the, I, I get it. The Undertaker, it's the 30th anniversary. It's all about The Undertaker at the moment. Joining Cameo. Any other time, that would be, oh, great. But it's just at this point of time of this whole third-party platform stuff, now... You have The Undertaker on there, and probably The Undertaker isn't even going to get the majority of that. It's going to be WWE getting the majority of that, and Undertaker getting a little bit of chump change. Because that's what WWE is doing when it comes to third-party platforms. And I just saw that and went, one, a grand. Two, oh, cameo at this point of time. Come on, do me a favor. But nevertheless, as always, this is just one man's opinion. What are your thoughts on all of these WWE news stories? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'll be sure to respond and reply to all of your comments. Really enjoy interacting with you guys and chatting about WWE here on the channel. If you have enjoyed this video, please do smash a like on the like button as well. Really just help us out here on YouTube, go up the rankings and get into people's recommendation feeds if they haven't seen our videos previously. But most importantly, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to Wrestle News 365 You can do that by clicking the bottom right-hand corner of the screen right now. Or if you wait a few seconds, there'll be a subscribe button at the end of this video along with another video for you to watch. We'll be doing a live watch-along for Survivor Series on Sunday, so be sure to subscribe, click that notification bell and you'll be notified when we go live on Sunday, as well as when we upload daily videos here to the channel. Thank you very much for watching, listening, streaming, or have you come across this video today. And I'll speak for you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or have you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.